Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm uh, Zahir Sunawala. I'm a consultant surgeon at Oxford University Hospitals. And I'll be talking to you today about uh, small intestinal neuroendocrine tumors. Neuroendocrine tumors occur all over the body, but uh, a large number of them occur in the gastrointestinal tract. And a common site for that is in the small intestine. And these are called midgut carcinoids. You can see in the diagram that uh, the small intestine consists of several parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And it's the third part of the small intestine called the ileum where most carcinoids occur. It's in green in the diagram in the, in the presentation. These tumors can be very small, and what is more, they can metastasize even when small. It's not uncommon when a patient is identified to have a carcinoid that the disease we see on the scans is not the tumor, but the areas it has spread to. The symptoms that such tumors cause are also a bit vague. People may just have a little bit of indigestion, a bit of fullness after meals, a bit of diarrhea. And it's difficult for a patient to take those sort of uh, symptoms as signifying serious disease. It's also quite difficult for GPs to diagnose that problem. And therefore, there is a often a large time between onset of symptoms and diagnosis. There was a study a while ago which uh, showed that on average, there's a three to six year lag between onset of symptoms and uh, a patient finally finding out what the underlying diagnosis is. These tumors start in the small intestine, but quite soon they tend to spread. And they spread in two ways. So this is how the small intestine is arranged. It's a bit like a Japanese fan. At the apex, you have the blood vessels, which then start dividing and branching. And at the end of the Japanese fan, you have about 15 feet of small intestine. And you can imagine a small tumor here in the small intestine. These tumors spread in two ways. They can spread along the lymph channels and spread to lymph glands along the blood vessels in this sheet carrying the blood vessels called the mesentery. Cancer cells can also go by the bloodstream and they then tend to go up to the liver and you can get spots in the liver. Now these Tumors are quite uh, unusual, and what's unusual about them is one, that they are extremely slow growing, and second, that they tend to produce various chemicals. And the most com uh, common chemical they produce is called serotonin. And it's particularly patients who have spread to the liver, where the liver metastases produce serotonin, and that can cause symptoms predominantly of diarrhea and flushing. And those symptoms are called carcinoid syndrome. The tumor in the small intestine and the lymph nodes, which can become quite large, can cause local symptoms by causing obstruction to the intestine or blockage to the blood vessels going to the intestine. So they're two quite different sort of problems that these patients face. How do we treat uh, these tumors? So one of the common treatments used is uh, a drug called a somatostatin analog. It's given as a monthly long acting injection. What the inj uh, injection achieves is it binds to the receptors on the tumor and blocks it from producing uh, serotonin. This helps to control any symptoms caused by carcinoid syndrome, and it also helps to slow down the growth of these tumors. Of course, surgery has a very important role to play, and surgery can be used to cut out 
the tumor in the intestine to cut out the lymph nodes and also to cut out the metastases in the liver. For people who can't have surgery or can't be totally cleared with surgery, there are other treatments that are used. In the liver, uh, one procedure is called thermal ablation. And this is a procedure where a needle is put from outside into the liver and the tip of the needle is heated and that produces local destruction. And if targeted accurately, the entire zone of the metastasis can be completely destroyed by thermal ablation. Another effective treatment is embolization, where the blood vessels going to the metastases in the liver can be blocked off. And that, again, shrinks the tumor down and reduces hormone production. For people where the disease is widespread, uh, radioisotope therapy and systemic chemotherapy are also used. But today I'll be focusing on surgery. Now, when we look at surgery for this problem, if we take the first common scenario, and that is a person who has an ileal carcinoid with mesenteric nodes, but there are no signs of disease elsewhere. There could then be a reasonably high chance of curing the problem by cutting out the mesenteric nodes as well as the primary tumor. What that involves depends on the mesenteric nodes. The primary tumor is quite small and would be very easy to cut out on its own, but the mesenteric nodes can be quite large and they can also be quite high up. So you can imagine that if the mesenteric nodes were here, all of these blood vessels would need to be sacrificed and you might need to resect a reasonable length of small intestine. If the mesenteric mass was up here, it's more of a problem because more of these vessels are involved and in fact, only one branch is, uh, is saved. And that means that most of the small intestine will have to be resected to reject this mass. And only the first 20, 25% of the intestine um, may be possible to salvage. This becomes quite a big operation. And what's more important, that leads to long-term side effects. When the intestinal length is quite short, food tends to pass through quite quickly, digestion and absorption is difficult, and people have chronic diarrhea. So people with carcinoid can have some diarrhea before the operation, but it's possible that the diarrhea can get worse after the operation. And that has a significant impact on quality of life. Sometimes the intestinal length is so short that they cannot sustain themselves. They, the digestion and absorption is interfered with to such a large extent that they have to have some supplemental intravenous feeding. Uh, and that is a big impediment to quality of life. So in this sort of disease, we have to be quite careful about how we operate and judge what the long-term side effects are likely to be. Occasionally, one may have to take a considered decision during the operation about whether we are able to remove this mesenteric mass completely or whether it's better to leave a little bit behind in order to spare one or two more blood vessels and more length of intestine. There are some people who have a primary tumor, lymph nodes, as well as liver metastases. And sometimes it's possible to reject all of the disease with operations on the intestine, mesentery, as well as the liver. And if possible, that is also a very good option. Unfortunately, quite a large number of people will have extensive metastatic disease. There may be spots further outside the liver 
there may be too many spots in the liver to be able to remove them all successfully. The question then arises as to whether they should have surgery for the primary tumor and the mesenteric lymph nodes, even though the problem's not going to be cured. And that's a difficult question. The benefits of removing the disease in the mesentery and the lymph, uh, intestine is that it prevents future episodes of intestinal obstruction. And then a number of these people will, over the years, go on to develop intestinal problems because of progression of the disease in the abdomen. Additionally, it's always been considered a good thing to resect the primary and mesenteric nodes in order to prevent long-term problems with intestinal obstruction. However, there was a recent study from Uppsala, which is one of the world's largest centers for dealing with neuroendocrine tumors. And they looked at 363 patients who had small bowel carcinoids with metastatic disease that was not completely resectable and who were asymptomatic and well. And they compared the half who had surgery versus the ones who didn't have early surgery. And they actually found no difference in median survival. So they concluded that this policy of resecting the primary tumor and lymph nodes in asymptomatic people in the setting of widespread metastatic disease does need to be used very judiciously. In conclusion, managing allele carcinoids requires a multidisciplinary team. You have to think of how to manage the mesenteric lymph nodes. You have to think of how to manage the liver metastases. We have to think of how to control the hormone production so as to deal with the carcinoid syndrome. Most importantly, we have to balance the effects of the treatment uh, on long-term quality of life rather than going for survival benefit alone. There's an old adage that surgeons spend many years learning how to operate, but after that, you need many more years to learn when to operate and when not to operate. Thank you very much.